Um, so just quick introductions. Um, and, and Andrew and Connor, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, but just as a quick background, uh, I think Cindy, Lynn, Marsha, and others have been in the loop on this. Uh, Robert uh, uh, Bowden has uh, uh, joined us you know, from, from the town's perspective, and I know he works closely with Black Earth on a number of issues. Uh, just at the uh, 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 Earth Day in May event, uh, Marsha uh, said you should wander over to the Black Earth table and talk to Andrew about uh, this opportunity that he has. So we talked a bit and said, well, this makes sense. You should probably come and present to the full committee. So everybody has a good sense of what it is uh, you are you have in mind. Um, and, and actually just in context, Lynn has put together an analysis about uh, 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 curbside food waste pickup that will follow up right behind this. So it seemed like a good uh, one-two punch of discussion about the food waste tonight. So um, Andrew and Connor, if you guys wanted to introduce yourselves and then if either of you wanna present, it's all yours. Yeah, um, my name's Andrew Brusso. Um, I run the compost sites for Black Earth. Um, I'm a partner and I've been around for 10 years. And Connor is the founder. Um, and I focus more on the collection side of things. So I'll let Andrew talk mostly about this whole uh, site at Hartwell. Uh, but if collection issues come up, I can chime in. But, yeah. but anyway, Black Earth, we started 11 years ago. We've been in Lexington for something like five years. Thanks to the help of a few of you here who have been great over the years, probably the best group of parents out of all of Massachusetts, I just have to say. Um, it's pretty wild. So it's fun to see you too, because I never see you, but I see your names on emails. <laughs> yeah, so over the last 10 years, but particularly the last five years, we've been honing our model to work with municipalities um, because at the end of the day, they have the greatest need for the service and DEP is going to mandate it statewide. So we've been honing ourselves to like, how can we provide that service to municipalities for as cheap as possible? Because time and time again, we keep hearing like, oh, it's expensive. It costs more. And it's true. So Connor and I have tried to figure out how to make it as cheap as possible. And the way to do it is that we invest in Lexington by building a, a building to process food straps without the issues. And in turn, we're able to provide uh, savings back to the town. And it doesn't matter if we're the collection hauler or not, but if we're the collection hauler, it's gonna be low cost or free as I outlined in our proposal. So I, I just wanted to check how many people were able to read what I had sent yesterday. Okay. So maybe half of you. Um, I was thinking it, made, it would make sense if I just ran through that proposal and um, just highlight a few topics. Um, does anyone have any questions right off the bat? No. Okay. All right, let me um, share my screen. And All right. Andrew, as you do that, just wanted to uh, say hello. Dave Pinsonneau uh, from the DPW at Looks like you've been able to join in the call too. So welcome, Dave. Thanks for joining. Oh, thank you. Great. Um, so I'm just going to go through the proposal because it's a good outline and I think it's a place where we can all work from going forward. So um, yes, we made a big claim that we can provide compost collection service for low cost or free to the town. And 
I saw your guys um, uh, analysis that you're going to present next and you're putting the numbers at a million dollars, a million point four. So you, you should wonder how can we do it for free or low cost, um, you know, given those high potential costs. And the reason is that there's a lot of synergies with managing the food straps in town. And those synergies mean less cost, which means less risk. And it means that we can be more sure of our numbers. So the first thing I'll say is, so these four points are synergies. So we utilize small, efficient trucks. So they're under CDL. We're not using a packer truck that is, you know, 30 tons that you need to accelerate from stop just to move 20 feet to the next house to then put the brakes on, stop it, put one bin in, then accelerate 30 tons again. You know, our trucks are small under CDL. And so it's about hitting the, the nail with the right size hammer. The next thing I'll say is processing food straps in town means shorter truck routes. And that means we need less trucks, we need less fuel, and we need less driver time. And all those things are harder to come by now. Um, and so if you have, uh, if you've set up your compost collection service in this manner, then you're gonna be more resilient to you know, the exact global shocks that we're having right now. And we're seeing that ourselves, like we don't need as much fuel and uh, our short drive times are great. You know, we got crunched in labor over the last two years, but we've actually done pretty well for that. So I think that just proves our, um, our model. The next thing is that is like our advantage is that we treat nutrients and food straps as a resource. And um, I think this is a major thing that's overlooked by a lot of people when they're talking about food strap collection and like organic recycling. Um, like what are we trying to recycle? Uh, and so I'm not gonna, you know, make you guys answer it. But what we're trying to recycle are the nutrients which are in the food straps. So nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, manganese, sulfur, all these nutrients, that is literally what we're recycling. Just like when you're recycling an aluminum can, you're recycling aluminum metal. And that aluminum metal was mined out of rock. Um, and the reason we recycle it is so that we don't have to mine new aluminum next time we need a soda can. So with food straps, it's the same thing. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, uh, all the nutrients, they are mined. Uh, nitrogen is mined from the atmosphere. Phosphorus, potassium, calcium, all those, they're mined out of rock. We use them once in agriculture and then we basically lose them. So then we have to go back to the mines to get new nutrients. So what we're doing is we're, we're recognizing that these nutrients have value and that they should, they can be used again to grow food. And that is a huge benefit because like that's what enables us to make a premium compost and like call it premium. And that allows us to make more on the back end, which means we don't need to make as much on the front end. So if you're uh, like, we're one of the few companies in the state, might even be the only one that uh, both compost and collects. So that's our advantage there. Um, and just real quick, I'm just gonna show you one of my favorite graphics is just, 
so right here, this is the, this is how much phosphorus we need every year as like globally. Uh, and this runs from the 1800s to 2010. And it shows um, where we get that, those nutrients. So you can see in 2010, we needed 22 million tons per year of phosphorus. So every year we have to get that, that much. So 22 million tons. And if you look, it looks like we got 3 million tons of that from manure. And the other 19 million tons came from phosphate rock. And so we're going back to the mines every year to get new nutrients. Um, and it's the same exact story for nitrogen, potassium, calcium. So like that is what we're recycling. Um, and I just think that story is missed a lot. So that's our advantage. And that's why we're able to provide a, a better price. And then continuing is our add-on services. So we deliver compostable bags. You know, it, it's not only a convenience for our customers, it makes it easier for them when we can deliver the compostable bags that they need in their house uh, for their countertop bin, but it also gives us a little profit, which is then able to mean we can provide a lower collection cost. Same thing, textiles recycling, we do that. And electronics recycling. You know, they're all things that people need. We're able to provide it. We make a little bit more money and then we're able to keep the collection cost lower. Um, and then the other thing is specifically for Lexington is that we have a lot of collection routes surrounding Lexington. So, we already have a lot of customers there and uh, those customers would feed into a building at the Hartwell site. So that allows us to have the confidence to say, yes, we can do this. Um, so um, those are the things that enable us to provide a lower cost service. and. I just want to talk a little bit about the what we would be doing at Hartwell Lab. So the facility needs to be um, regional. Like we need to bring in food scraps from out of town in order to uh, compost the stuff from in town uh, for, for free and to provide the collection. It's probably about like a three to one ratio, but I can't... Uh, guarantee that but that's the idea like ultimately like with the DEP waistbands coming in I think there's going to need to be one one organic recycling facility for every five to ten towns so in the end it's all going to be regional like I really don't see a situation where every town has their own compost site that I don't think that's realistic um and like the reason, so it needs to be regional because we need to invest in, in the structure. There's a covered portion, there's a concrete floor, there's a block wall, there's blowers. Um, and if you were only handling the stuff from Lexington, you wouldn't be able to really uh, pay for that infrastructure and like not lose money. So that's why it needs to be regional. And Andrew, when you said that, that you were talking about a three to one ratio, did you mean you'd be bringing in about twice as much from out of town as you would be collecting in town or three, three, something else? three times as much? Bringing in three times as much as was being generated in Lexington. So yep. four times the, the size of, of four times the total volume of Lexington. Yeah, yep. And that, so what we're kind of thinking is the town will produce about 25 tons, um, you know, somewhere between 25 to 40 tons per week of food straps. And so we'd bring in 105 to like 200 tons of food straps per week. 
And that's so, and just to give you some perspective, I talk about it later in this proposal, but when you guys were talking about the anaerobic digester, like five or 10 years ago, that was, you were going to be bringing in a hundred to 200 tons of food waste per day. And so we're saying it's per week, which is like composting is on a way different scale than um, digesters. Like digesters are hungry. And that's actually part of their problem, I would argue. I, I so, would also just say, um, yeah, that ratio, that's what so the, I, I think it was obviously, it was written in there, but bringing it from the outside subsidizes the town of Lexington. So we could bring that ratio down, but then the cost of Lexington goes up. So that's just like a, a sliding bar. And then the other thing is, the uh, the building is especially important for Lexington because of the Hartwell the uh, runway with so uh, you cannot have birds uh, at like you know you can't have open food waste at a site like that or you're gonna have birds or then you're gonna have problems with the airport I think yeah I would also want to add uh, possibly that um, uh, if possible to build as much as the Hartwell uh, would tolerate, um, that would depend on the uh, opinion of professional opinion from consultants or uh, uh, they, uh, Mr. Prinsnow, the DPW uh, their, uh, leader and leadership and. Yes, yep, we agree with that. Um, we think that uh, like what we're suggesting is to have 105 tons per week. And that's starting with the uh, DEP 1604 permit. Um, but I think all that is details that can be worked out and that's um, details that get us to, you know, a, a final uh, contract and like a final cost of collection service. Yeah, what, what I meant, sorry, is that the maximum, uh, we want to maximize because, you know, the regionally we don't have many compost centers. Whatever Lexington can do to contribute to the region that, you know, we can uh, provide the service to our neighboring town, that will be nice because we don't want to be under capacity. And then later on we, we can, well, I don't know how easy is it to add, but I'm just saying that um, as you analyze, we need a, a lot of capacity. Yep. And, can can and, we and just, finish just, 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 the proposal? Uh, one, one, one moment, please. Uh, I, I should have mentioned this in the beginning. Um, if, if Connor and Andrew, if you guys could go ahead and do your presentation, then I would like to give Dave Pinsano and Rob a chance to ask questions and comment if they choose to. Uh, then after that, I'm going to go to committee members and committee members can then make comments. And then we'll look at how much time we have left. And I know there's a lot of folks who are attending to listen to this, but we'll try and get uh, residents to comment also. But uh, th this could turn into a, uh, we could spend the whole evening doing yeah, this. So and okay. Thumb up. Okay, so let me just um, move ahead then, uh, cause I, I, I think there is the most value in the discussion. Uh, so what we're suggesting is we'd lease an acre of land for the building uh, biofilter parking and such. And then we could have an additional acre for curing, screening, stockpile, or in a more integrated uh, approach that the, the material that comes out of the back of the building uh, would go into the existing windrows uh, that the town has. So that would be a more integrated approach. Um, and let me just show you, so right now we're under contract with the town of Manchester to build, um, this will be our second generation of these facilities. Uh, we're going to start construction in September and uh, should be operational next um, May. And just to show you what the inside is, so there's a roof going over this, um, trucks, deliver food scraps here, it gets blended here, uh, sits for three days, and then it goes into this first bay back here for a week, 
and then it moves to this bay for a week and that moves to this bay for a week and then the material goes out the back of the building um, to be outdoors because at this point it's black and homogenous all the food's gone we've gone through the, the pathogen kill stage we've managed the liquids like the, the liquids hand hands down are like the most challenging component of handling food scraps like trust me when i say you don't want to be dumping food scraps in the dirt because that will turn into a mud hole over time uh this is the underground so below ground there's air pipes that blow air up under all the zones and that's what provides oxygen which gets the rapid breakdown so this system is not only faster than outdoor composting, but it's it gets a lot of volume reduction and achieves your pathogen kill, your liquids management, and your your food destruction. And your odor management. Yep, and your odor, because you're capturing the odors in the building and then it goes out back to um, a bed of wood chips, mm. which is a biofilter. Which also captures um, the ammonia. Yeah, nitrogen. So here's here's a smaller version in Groton. Um, so here's the material. The build the you know trucks go in. Uh, the material is inside for a week and a half, and then it goes into the windrows outdoors, and then gets turned. Um, and so so this is our facility in Groton, Mass. It's been operational since 2020. And um, how yeah. long do you think it would take to build this in Lexington, Andrew? <clears throat> so uh, we were talking about that earlier. I think it'd be a year to permit and uh, maybe eight months to build, maybe less. It depends on, the, um, you know, how much red tape there is and how much uh, work needs to be done with the DEP. But I think two years is good. So what this will allow us to do is provide a very low cost collection service to the town um, because we have this infrastructure in town, which it is able to um, manage uh, the food straps and it's shorter trucking distances. But that said too, if you have a lower collection service from a split body or something, we don't have to do the collection. Yeah. I'm so, just saying that we do the collection and we never allow other companies to dump at our sites. But if, uh, if this is the town, if this is Lexington site and you have a different hauler doing the collection, cause you know, that was in the proposal, um, then we'd still, you know, we're, we're willing to definitely operate the site, but still want to be able to bring in food from the outside areas or the whole economics kind of has to get recalculated. Yep. And so that's a rundown of our proposal. Um, I, it's, you all have it, so you can read through it and I, I'm open to answer questions about it now. And I just want to say, one last thing is um, I, I, we read through your analysis of the different options for curbside, uh, the three scenarios, compost company, trash company, or a split body. And like, we have some comments on that. So we're happy to share that too, um, either maybe after that presentation. So yeah, that, yeah, if you were able to stick around for that, that'd be, that would be great. So uh, great, uh, Andrew and Connor, thank you very much. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, Dave or Robert, do you guys have any questions or comments for Andrew and Connor? We'll start off there. Yeah, hi, uh, Dave Pinsonell, I'm the Public Works Director. Um, I don't have any, any uh, questions per se, uh, just a couple of comments um, that, so this is, um, you know, the town is going to, uh, food waste collection in one way, shape, or form. So this would be one model, one option that that we will be looking at. 
Um, there are others out there and we can weigh all the benefits of those. We also have to keep in mind that the Hartwell site provides a lot of other benefits and costs avoided to the town and getting, you know, compost, the different materials out of the, um, uh, the trash stream and, and taking care of. So, you know, we've really got to look at that site wholly uh, to see long term what we want to do or not do up at that site. Um, the, that site is a, a closed landfill, so it is going to involve DEP. Um, so we will have to, and Andrew mentioned that, so that, that is going to be a process. Uh, we had to go through a very lengthy process to put the solar in. Um, so, you know, just some things to think about. Um, so again, it's going to be one proposal that we're going to be looking at in the grand scheme of things and seeing all the other uh, things that we could or couldn't do in regards to food waste collection. So, um, so it's good to have that, to see what that is. Uh, but there's a lot of other variables at play. So I just want people to be aware and just kind of take a step back for a second. And, you know, we're going to look at all of those things and, and then come up with recommendations um, for what's going to be the prudent thing to do for Lexington. So, um, so I just wanted to make sure that everybody was, you know, was on board with that. No, no, that's great. Thank, thanks very much, Dave. Uh, Robert, did you have anything you wanted to ask about or comment? Yeah, I mean, uh, one one thing, one concern I have, and I I would really be very supportive of seeing a, a, a curbside program that is able to divert organics and possibly even go to an every other week trash collection, and that I think is a good a good goal. The, the issue is, one of the issues I have uh, concerns with is uh, right now we're taking in probably a little bit over 50,000 cubic yards of yard waste a year. Um, uh, and obviously only a limited amount of nitrogen. Last year we sold out. Um, we don't, I foresee that if a site is going to uh, be up there, we the site is going to need more carbon because basically all of the waste that comes in is is we're tapping we're tapping the that amount now there is the advantage of being able to compost faster um with with this facility um but i also see depending on what role the town has uh as far as um making product is, um, how do I say this? Uh, we are doing very good up there at Hartwell. We have double the amount of revenue since the solar project. And this year we're gonna break a million dollars in total revenue. And we're, we're still working kind of behind the uh, in a challenging way because we're paying for two large pieces of equipment. So I see lots of synergies. I see, I think there are lots of roles and I think that uh, it's, you know, like for example, would, uh, was Black, would at Black Earth plan on having a loader and a, uh, an operator up there throughout the week, five days a week? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, because I would see that as essential because again, if we, if we have some really firm roles right now that, um, that are very defined, like for instance, we don't have any birds right now. You know what I mean? The threat of birds, you know, it's like Alfred Hitchcock's movie, you know, I, I, and, and this was, we had this conversation before, gentlemen. So um, we also know that the building will, will work well. My other question is, is why, why does the food waste have to go in an air static pile uh, building rather than just be processed in like a concrete bunker with seven or eight different areas that still do the air static the air, the, uh, the static air flow through. Okay. Um, Todd, do you want me to oh, yeah. respond? Oh yeah. Yeah, so uh, to that question specifically, 
I mean, our, our building essentially is concrete bunkers with a roof over top. So um, we are all about aerated stack piles. It's just, we want to have a roof over to both keep rain out for stormwater reasons and to have zero chance of birds and have odor capture like that. Okay. And the other thing is liquids capture because when you're unloading the trucks, there's extra liquids, especially in the summer, and you want to capture those. Sure. And what about an additional uh, carbon that needs to be brought in? Yeah, I think that represents more revenue for the town of Lexington. I mean, yeah, I don't think that's me, a problem, right, Andrew? Because there's a lot of towns that are trying to get rid of it that we uh, talked about. Yeah. Yeah, that's not my concern. It, my, my concern is getting it clean. Not, I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, cups and, and bottles and things. The, the hall like, that I... Excuse me? Sorry, go, go ahead. No, I was just saying the haulers, you have to keep your... So the hauler that currently is picking up our yard place, we, we've had some good experience uh, so far. But I remember our contract with Arlington and the contract that we had with JRM. It was a constant, you know, they use these yard waste trucks from other municipalities that are traditionally low on the totem pole. In other words, it's, it's easier for them to ship, uh, it's easier for them to put more hydraulic fluid in the truck rather than fix the leak. And that's something that we have to be very diligent about because that's not going to be tolerated to accept that kind of material. Um, and, but, but Connor is right. There are lots of communities that would be looking to try to find a disposal site for it. And, and it does add a possibility of getting revenue. But we've had that with Arlington and it came with a lot of, it came with a lot of, uh, pro, not a, it came with a lot of stuff is what I'm trying to say. And uh, curbside yard waste, People, I mean, someone, you know, when we had, were taking stuff, put a toilet in it. They put all kinds of stuff that somehow get picked up in a yard, curbside yard waste truck. I much rather prefer contractors that are doing, are doing lawns, uh, lawns and something like that. The other component I would say that would be a pro would be services for local food generators, be it. Uh, grocery stores and or primarily probably restaurants because if I I bet you if we took a poll of the of the of the resident excuse me of the restaurants in Lexington and we talked to them about a ban on uh, municipal excuse me on on resident uh, on commercial food waste that it's going to be a half a ton a week starting in November. There, that that information has not been out there to the restaurants that would be impacted by that. And uh, but I also see the value of that service if it was offered from that site would be a, would be that, that those would be our allies because they 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 are looking for a solution to their problem. All right. Okay. So yeah, I, I I agree on all that. Um, it, in the later half of our proposal, I talked about how we'd be able to provide lower cost collection to businesses in town and the schools in town because we are there and we have a short truck distance and we can handle the food straps in town. And it's important. So we talk about food straps coming from out of town, but Lexington's food straps get priority in there. Um, do you foresee some educational programs that could be rolled out in the schools to ensure that the supply you get meets your expectations? Because I think that will be needed. Absolutely. Yeah. Connor, do we, how many schools do we pick up from? Like 70? Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. so the, the, this is something we've been honing for a while and uh, working with them to make sure, you know, do they have the right trays if they go that route? What can they do sure. in the school, um, you know, in the cafeteria to reduce trash even coming in? Yeah. Well, and, and Robert, thanks very much. Um, I'm, I'm going to 
just because uh, the, the clock is ticking on our agenda here, I'm going to go uh, to committee members and committee members. If you have questions, if you could uh, uh, keep them targeted and we'll tr go around the table once and then we'll see if we have time for resident questions. Cindy. Thank you. Um, thank you um, to Connor and Andrew. Uh, yes, nice to see you in um, face to face, or not truly face to face, but anyway. Um, Robert, David, thank you for, for um, showing up tonight. Thank you for everybody who's who showed up. I just wanted, I wanted to point out a couple of things for, for people that are on the call that may not know. Um, and, and, and Andrew and, and Connor kind of alluded to it. Um, the state, you know, we're headed in this direction. We have to, we must divert our food waste. And, and one of the things that we need are sites where we can compost the food waste at. So I think that's one reason why, I mean, 18 months ago, uh, Connor and Andrew, when you first sort of, you know, talking about this, I see that your, your proposals are clearly much more home than they were. You have, to, you know, 18 months more of experience from the site at Groton, you know, and how to, how to make this work. But um, I just want to say, yes, there will probably be some, um, digestion, um, anaerobic digestion, you know, continuing um, throughout the state to to get to our goals, but we actually absolutely need space. And so the fact that, um, you know, our, our town's DPW is considering um, doing something this is, like this, um, Mr. Pintano, I, I totally understand that this is, you know, this is new, you know, there's a lot of things to think about, um, but it sounds like Black Earth is really flexible. So I'm just hearing many, many good things about that. Um, the, the building, yes, will help with odors. I think that I think the plan is 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 great, and you have like you like you said a great a great community of people. Um, you know, seven thousand students um, in in the Lexington Public Schools that have been doing this for 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 many many years. Um, uh, over twelve hundred, I think maybe we're at thirteen hundred. You know, paying customers. Um, you, we've got our Lexort. You know, the partnership with. Um, with the town as well for for free drop off service. I think we, we just you know we, we things are going great, but we really have got to get that plan and get there to to make this um, available to everybody in town um, and accessible to everybody in town, not just you know so from from the cost perspective and the and the um, uh, you know uh, convenience or you know the the availability perspective. Um, I didn't. I think I, I. I did have one question about needs more carbon. I think I got answered. I think. I think Robert, you were talking about so the the the, food, the yard waste that is um, uh, handled or turned into compost at Hartwell could could really use the carbon that would come out of a food uh, food that would be there. So I think I got that um, question that answered. Not, well, well, go ahead, Robert. That would be not, I'm sorry. I just want to clarify that carbon is the browns. Nitrogen is the green, so okay. food waste would be nitrogen. Okay, so you, but you need you need both of them. Yeah, so black earth would take out the towns to get more carbon and for the food waste side. Got it, got and, it, thank and you. And not take I, away from whatever carbon Lexington is already bringing in. Right. Yeah, and I think there's plenty of carbon in the area. I know, I know a outfit in your area that is sending five tractor trailers a day up to New Hampshire in the uh, fall to get rid of leaves. So wow. I think there's- Yeah, uh, and we, we know a lot of towns need. with a lot of carbon. So, I mean, because we have three other sites. So we have a good sense on who doesn't have good carbon. And that's, and that's good information to have. Um, I also wanted to point out a couple of other things. Robert, thank you for bringing up the, um, the, the food waste band expansions, basically, or, or, or the contraction, if you will, um, yet coming November, you're right, we're gonna have to do a lot of education. Uh, we're, we're working on it in the schools, but you know, a lot of, you know, this um, diverting um, food waste and organics from the trash at ha you know, half a ton uh, per week for any, any uh, that's gonna hit a lot of um, restaurants and things. And so uh, we've, we've gotta get this going. Um, and one last thing I wanted to, and Andrew, at the very beginning, you were talking about how, you, you know, this this black gold, right? You can make, grow so much greater food with with more nutrients in the food itself, all those good things. Having, um, and I know you know this, and, and I just wanted to say it for everybody on the call, um, getting more um, organic compost on the ground also helps sequester uh, more carbon, 
right? So it's not, it's, it's doing so many, so many good things. And, and it, it is just, you know, the fact that we're incinerating it um, right now is just, you know, we, we've got to take advantage of that, of that valuable resource that's there. Um, so I didn't really have any questions, and, and, but I thank you very much. All right, uh, Charlie, do you have anything? Paul? Uh, yeah, I just had a couple of clarifying questions. Um, when you referred to add-on services to customers, um, you were talking about things that you would sell to individual customers, uh, sort of piggybacked on the on the pickup process. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, um, it, it's efficient. It's it's because we're already there. We, mm -hmm. we can do it. You know, it saves an Amazon truck rolling through or something else. So you can you can have some kind of little bin on the truck for the textiles and the electronics and pick them yep, up as and, you're going along. And and the delivery of the compostable bags. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing is, I don't want to get into the whole regulatory system, but the um, uh, you talked about the 1604 permit and the R or an RCC, and I'm just wondering whether that can be explained briefly, and if not, whether you, maybe you could just send us a document explaining what you're talking about there. Yep. So. I currently, I believe you have a 1604 permit and that allows you to do a certain amount of food straps uh, per week. An RCC permit would allow you to do more. Um, so at, at the Manchester facility <laughs> that we're building, that is also on a landfill and we had to go through uh, DEP, get a post-closure use permit, but also they asked us for to go to the RCC permit, which is the next, which is the one above the 1604. So it's, it's a, a little, little more strict, a little more um, Black Earth pays for it and Black Earth, uh, you know, is responsible okay. for that permit. Okay, so you're saying that you might have to go to a, a higher, more permissive level of permit um, unless, the DEP allowed you to have a, a second 1604 with a, the simpler permit. Is that correct. sort of what you're I, saying? Correct. I, I have a feeling they would ask us for an RCC permit because they would treat it as one site, but I don't know the answer. Um, okay. Just, just, just making sure that I understood what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, okay. And, uh, I think that's it for me. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Lynn? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, so I just want to uh, thank you for the presentation. I just want to uh, stress, uh, like we talk about, that uh, the capacity to compost around Massachusetts is very limited. We are extremely fortunate in Lexington that we have this uh, compost site. Um, I, my understanding is that that density is more for big cities where they don't have the space, but in the suburbs, when we do have the space, I think we should definitely take full advantage uh, of it. Um, I'm happy we have this meeting. Uh, one quick question for Andrew or Connor. Uh, did you mention how you would screen mistakes? I think Mr. Boudot mentioned, uh, uh, Baldwin mentioned the, um, there are some could be mistakes people send in. Uh, do you, did you mention how you're gonna uh, do you have a machine to sort through the things? You mean for trash or contamination? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we would actually accomplish that as the materials leave in the building. We would sort trash out at that point. Oh, so um, you do it at the end? Yeah, it's more in the middle. Um, but yes, we would do it there. And uh, I think that would make it the building integrate well with the existing compost operations. Yeah, you, you have like a machine doing that or you have some sort of... Yeah, okay. uh, it, it's a combination of machine and by hand. Okay. But also when the driver is picking up, if it's contaminated, like a lot of trash, we don't pick it up. So Awesome, yeah. 
that's and important. That's say that separates us from trash companies. Because yeah. That's why we don't allow other companies to dump at our sites because we did it once and we were appalled, so. Yeah, uh, my second question is, thank you for that. Uh, my second question is that uh, if it takes two years uh, to get a permit and the, uh, build a site, uh, but during these two years, um, uh, as a, a Lexington residents have been doing this for many years and at least 20% are doing this either through paid service or backyard composting or the like sort uh, free drop out locations. Um, I think we are very ready, uh, hopefully to push for town-wide uh, food waste collection uh, as soon as possible. So uh, to wait for two years, uh, it's, uh, during these two years of waiting, uh, would the Black Earth have some proposals on how would you would have some uh, offers for our town to bring our food waste to a different location, a digester or a different compost site you have? Yeah, well, we're open to figuring out solutions, whether it's we provide the service for a few years for a cost, or maybe we continue as private pay and lower the cost. But like it, if we're under contract with Lexington, then we would do whatever we can to make it work with you guys. Because like being under contract mean, you know, gives us the assurance that we're going to yeah. be but working with you for 20 years. So, you know, we're happy. The, the other thing too, though, is that our Manchester site opens up 100 tons a week. And so when do you expect that, Andrew, by uh, like January next year? May of next year. May of next year. So it's not two years of a wait before we have all that new capacity. And meanwhile, mm -hmm. I doubt you're going to go from uh like 15 percent to 100 percent within two years uh participation i haven't seen it i mean you never know especially especially you guys but um <laughs> but uh i mean in manchester we do citywide we've been there for like five years and it's around 40 percent so uh 40 percent in lexington might be 25 tons and we could handle that today if that's the case I i'm happy to hear that um I'm not uh, um, forecasting the numbers right now, but I, I heard in Hamilton, they have 90 plus percent. And we do have a very, very motivated population in Lexington. And a lot of us are uh, ready to help on the communications. But the point is that uh, if, if we, uh, you're saying that if we, if we have a contract, you're willing to do the first two years and offer, uh, give us a good offer. Is that my understanding correct? Yes, I, I, I can't say what that offer would be Okay. Uh, just because it all comes down to the details of uh, the contract, which I hear other people say in the past and I'm like, oh, they're just starting the issue. But it really is we need to like negotiate and, and figure out what both parties uh, value the most. Yeah. And at the you know worst case scenario for us is. Uh, we don't have the capacity and then we have to get rid of routes that are the least dense. So we make them to Lexington. So it's not, you know, if we were like at a peak and couldn't find out where to take all this stuff, then we would just have to, you know, probably shed some routes that were the worst routes out of all anyway. So we've never had to do that, I'm just saying. Yeah. Lexington would take priority if under a contract. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but uh, I think you mentioned before that if uh, during these first two years before you set up the facility, if a hauler is picking up uh, compost from Lexington, you will not accept from a different oh, hauler. Is that correct? Hauler. Um, no, I mean, I, I guess we would make that work. If we had, it depends on the details, as Andrew said, you know, like, term of the lease is one thing, you know, like for instance, in Manchester, we're talking about a hundred year lease to get an even better deal for the town. So that's another variable to consider, but. Okay. So there are a lot to, 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 to talk about. Okay. Thank you. And, uh, and Tanae, I see you've, you've joined, you've joined us. Uh, just wondering Tanae, if you have any questions, uh, for Andrew or Connor? Uh, no, not really. I okay. think compost okay. is definitely needed though. All right, good. Thanks for joining.
Yeah. Um, all right. So we have, so we're, we're officially 15 minutes past time, but I know this is a popular topic. Uh, so five minutes uh, for if any residents have some questions to ask. All right, seeing none. Oh, I was gonna say, if Marsha didn't have a question for me, I'd be very disappointed. So go ahead, Marsha. I don't really have a question. I, <laughs> I wanna express appreciation uh, for this conversation, both from Black Earth and, and, and this panel. And I think the greater understanding of the benefits of composting, both at the back end with a nutrient rich soil amendment at the front end and eliminating waste is so important. Um, I feel like we can make this thing happen, um, but it's, it's very clear that we have a unique uh, site to accomplish this kind of goal where we could go local with our food waste, which is 40% of our, um, by weight of our trash. I think this is a really great opportunity. So thanks so much to everyone. And that's it. Short and sweet. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Oh, Andrew, go ahead. Yep. I, I just wanted to do a closing thought. Um, Basically, uh, Dave, I, I haven't met you before, but um, hold on, Levon. I'm happy to work with you guys. I, the proposal we put forward is kind of like the, like what I think would uh, integrate well with the site. And I, am, I, I completely agree that like, there's a lot of things that go on in the site, material recycling, soil recycling, uh, brush recycling, like all those are like critical functions. And I would only want to do something if it integrates well with what you guys have. That's it. Now that that's great. And, uh, and now Dave, I'll let, I'll let you kind of have the last word, but that's you know, very much what we wanted to kind of accomplish in this meeting, just to kind of, you know, hear the proposal from Black Earth, the uh, get you and Robert uh, kind of engaged in the conversation. And because obviously this is something between the Waste Reduction Task Force, DPW, the Hartwell Compost Facility, you just need to kind of figure out what makes sense for you all to do, you know, to accomplish your goals. But so Dave, do you have any final thoughts? No, I, I think you just wrap, wrapped it up. So there's a lot of variables, a lot of things that we're gonna have to look at uh, to make sure we're doing what is right uh, not just for this, but for the, all of the other things that are, you know, that are happening either at that site or with collection throughout town. So a um, lot of analysis to do, but we're on that path. We're working towards that. Um, and, you know, and getting all the information only helps us uh, to get there. So uh, we appreciate that. And um, are there kind of next steps in this discussion that makes sense to talk about? I mean, is the Waste Reduction Task Force going to be meeting soon? And this could be a topic or I, I know the contract is coming up for collection, uh, you know, to be discussed. So um, yeah, we'll yes, we'll be convening uh, the Waste Reduction Task Group. Um, there's also, you know, we've got to just in general, take a look at the site. Um, and just see what the long-term uh, goals are for there as well. Um, so we'll we'll be working on those. Yes, I would envision getting the task group together within the next couple of weeks. So um, we'll have that discussion. Very good. So uh, with that, Connor and Andrew, thanks very much for the presentation. Uh, I think we'll move on to the next item.